All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Lauren, and I'd like to welcome you to the California State Railroad Museum. Thank you for joining our Career Day Home Learning Program with PORTS. This is something that I'm really excited about that I've wanted to do for a while. Because while the museum has been closed to the public mostly since March, um, we have some folks that have been working really hard be behind the scenes to put together some digital interpretive programs and some exhibits. And I would like to take the next 30 to 40 minutes to spotlight the work that these people are doing and share with you some of the different roles and jobs that we have in California State Parks and also at a, a railroad museum. So I'm gonna keep my mask on as I'm going to a couple different presenters today. Um, you're gonna hear from our museum director, our interpreter two, our guide one, and our museum curator. And again, my name's Lauren, I'm a park interpretive specialist, and we'll go ahead and get our career day started here. Actually, before we go, this program, I was hoping we'd have some high school or college students joining us. Um, please put the hand up if you are a high school or a college student. Okay, we have a couple there. Looks like we have five or six. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. And um, could you please put the hand up if you um, have ever been an employee of California State Parks or a volunteer, if you have ever worked or volunteered for California State Parks? I see some of my coworkers there. Hi, everybody. Okay, looks like we have about seven. Thank you for joining us as well. Now that I have a little better idea who is with us, we are going to begin our little career day tour here. And starting off, hello there. Hi. Hi. Could you please tell us a little bit about your position and sure. what you do here at the Railroad Museum? Yeah, my name is Ty Smith and I'm the museum director of the California State Railroad Museum in Old Sacramento State Historic Park. And uh, there are a couple of answers to that question. Uh, we could spend uh, all morning talking about all of the paperwork I do and all of the bureaucratic processes that I'm involved in, all of the Zoom meetings I have uh, with uh, people here at the museum, but also people in the larger uh, department because um, the California State Railroad Museum is part of California State Parks. And so there's a lot of uh, sort of administrative bureaucratic things I, I find myself involved in. Um, that's part of my job. I don't consider it part of my work. My work really uh, is to, um, we're celebrating 40 years here of being the California State Railroad Museum. We opened in 1981. So my real work uh, here at the California State Railroad Museum is um, allowing good people to do good work within the museum in their various uh, uh, positions. Uh, and then also ensuring that we're as successful in the next 40 years as we have been in the last 40 years. And in my opinion, the way that we do that is by making the museum into a laboratory of learning that is more than just field trips, but it actually uh, students uh, at every level working within the museum to create um, uh, products and, and, and to learn um, by doing. Uh, it's also by being a museum without walls, getting outside of the, the walls of the museum and reaching people wherever they may be. And that includes, you know, in a digital sense. Um, and then also really making the museum not uh, a place just for visitors, but being a place of real community. And I consider those, those things being the, the true kind of core of what I do here. Thanks, Ty. And can you tell us a little bit about your path to get here? Maybe education oh. <laughs> or previous jobs that have set you up to be where you sure. are here? Well, uh, my position here, my being here is really the, the product of a very unlikely uh, course. Um, I was a very accomplished juvenile delinquent in high school. Uh, it was going really well, but then you have to do something for a living and, and find your work in the world. And uh, I didn't know really what that would be until I took my first um, college level history course. I stumbled into uh, a course that was taught in a most unique way um, by a public historian and somebody who became my mentor uh, and really helped me connect all of, the, all of the dots. And he didn't teach just from a textbook. He taught uh, really place-based education. Uh, we would meet at the parking lot of the local Grange building to learn about agrarian reform. And, and it really, um, it, you know, sort of opened my mind. And, and so for a long time, all I ever wanted to do was teach. Uh, and specifically, I wanted to teach at the community college level. Um, but they don't let you just do it just because you want to. You have to earn degrees and you have to go through this whole educational process. And you still have to eat and, uh, you know, have, uh, you know, lights on in your house and all of that in the meantime. 
And so I stumbled on, uh, I worked in auto parts for a lot of years, but then uh, I found a little ad in the corner of a local newspaper and it said that I could get paid to talk. And this was quite an amazing thing for me because all my life, all everybody, all anyone ever did was tell me to shut up. And so uh, here, here was my chance. And so I became a, a guide trainee, uh, giving tours at a place called Hearst Castle, which is a California state park. And that um, led to my path within California state parks. And uh, I worked on a variety of projects. I, I, I was um, one of a, a handful of people who began distance learning for California state parks through the ports program. So in 2005, all of this was just a dream. And now uh, we're going on 16 years um, with that very successful program. Uh, and I've worked at First Castle a couple of times in my career. I worked at the California State Capitol Museum. And then about four years ago, uh, I landed here uh, at the California State Railroad Museum. Um, I don't teach full time, but I do teach uh, uh, as an adjunct at uh, CSU Sacramento. And as much as possible, I like to use the museum as the classroom. And so uh, we teach museums courses and exhibits courses, uh, teaching a California history course, and really in the context of state parks and uh, the museum here. Well, Ty, can we do a little walk and talk? Sure. And maybe as we're walking, can you tell us in the past four years, um, a project that you've worked on or something that you are excited that you've contributed here to the museum? Yeah, we could point all over, but maybe we'll yeah. come to the center and pivot a little bit. All right. And if you point that way, you'll see a refrigerator car and the exhibit in and around that. Uh, I'm very proud of, not because it's something that, that I made or something that the team here made, but because we invited students to come in and learn by doing. And so that exhibit is fully the product uh, of the work of a, a group of graduate students in the public, public history program at Sac State. And they were invited in, I turned them loose on the museum. I said, pick a category, pick a place, pick a topic, and then develop an exhibit out of it. And what they came up with out of that experience um, was a farm to fork, a public history, which sought to give a longer, deeper history to Sacramento and its farm to fork heritage um, by explaining how that all came to be and how it was uh, the rail uh, was the way that the farm got to the fork. Um, and then I'll, I'll uh, point you to another thing. Uh, here you have this massive statue uh, sculpture group of the Chinese uh, workers of the building the Transcontinental Railroad. Uh, we have it here just on loan. It's sort of a safe place uh, to, to stay um, until it gets installed as part of a larger monument. But uh, its presence here speaks to a longer, um, deeper connection that we've uh, developed with the Chinese railroad worker descendant community here in Sacramento. And um, what we wanna do as much as possible at the museum is not me to tell people's stories, but to provide space uh, for communities and different people who have had different relationships uh, with the, the kind of our collective railroad heritage um, to tell their own stories. And so later, I think you're gonna even see the exhibit uh, the Chinese Railroad Worker uh, Experience Exhibit. And that really was a product of this interactive uh, community involvement where we invited people in to tell uh, their descendant stories and the stories about the people who actually built the Transcontinental Railroad, which uh, is arguably the most transformative uh, history that we have. It, it, it is more di directly related to who we are as a people today than just about any other piece of California history. Yeah, I'm excited to have Debbie joining us as well to be able to show that exhibit and some of the planning that went into that. Do you have any uh, sneak peeks for us, Ty? Anything on the back burner, any projects that you are excited about that is coming up? Coming up. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, we have been spending our downtime when we've had to close the doors to our community to uh, spruce up the museum. But, you know, it's been a huge economic impact to us as well. And so we've really pivoted. But we really are committed um, in every way uh, to being a museum without walls. And I mentioned earlier, it's important that we reach people where they are, not just simply wait for them to come and visit. And so all of our work um, over the last year really has been about um, taking things that are hidden away in different places uh, in our storage facilities and uh, documents that are filed away in folders and bringing those as much as possible to the light. And so we've invested in a lot of infrastructure like book scanners and uh, large format scanners, and um, also taking 360 degree uh, views of different objects, and then also um, making big plans for our lobby uh, to be a place not only that welcomes our community, 
uh, but then also displays more of what we have uh, on exhibit. So uh, all of that stuff, all of that work that we've done over the last year is really starting to see the light of day in various ways through online exhibits uh, and student-led online exhibits. We have a lot of interns working on all those things. And so um, I'm really excited about uh, you know, releasing all of that into the world. And that's starting to happen right now. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ty. Last question before I go. You've given us a lot of tidbits and I can tell you have a lot of excitement about sure. so many things that you're working on, but what do you like about your job? Uh, what are some of your favorite bits of what you do? Yeah. Um, what I like most about my job is the, is the work part of it. And what I mean by that is to say, there's all the stuff you have to do when you have a job. And then there's all the stuff you get to do. And for me, it's such a great privilege. Uh, I really see my role as an enabler, um, as um, my, my real work uh, at this place is to, is to create space for really talented people to put their passion to work in the world. And so anytime I'm able to uh, empower people, to, to give people uh, a chance to uh, you know, create an exhibit or uh, to create a program, uh, that, that brings me the most joy. You know, it's none of the paperwork stuff. It's all of the, uh, this is a, an amazing experiment, an amazing laboratory of learning and just turning people with good ideas loose on it uh, to, to make it successful. Thank you so much, Ty. Thank you for turning me loose and letting me do some ports programs. Uh, yeah, it's been a whole of lot of fun and I appreciate you coming into the museum to do this. My pleasure, yeah. Right. Bye. Bye. Thank you. All right, so we are gonna make our way here over to our next presenter. And Ty talked about some developments of new exhibits. And this is a person you wanna hear from about that. So hey, I would Lauren. like to, hello, Kim. I'd like to introduce you to Kim Whitfield. Hi, Lauren. Uh, everybody in the ports world out there in the digital landscape, welcome. I'm Kim Whitfield, and I'm the park interpreter too here at the California State Railroad Museum. And my job is to work with my team to develop, design, and install new exhibits, but also to de design, develop, and implement new interpretive programs and existing interpretive programs. Nice. And can you tell us, are we, are we doing a little walk yeah, as we go down the cab forward? I love this. One of our newest exhibits. Awesome. Um, so Kim, as our interpreter too, can you tell us if you've done anything with parks or other positions or school-wise that led you into this position? Yeah, so I have been with California State Parks for three and a couple of months, three years and a couple of months now. And I started in visitor services here as a seasonal employee working with Jason Rankins, our guide supervisor, um, welcoming school groups to the museum and doing graphics design projects. I actually started my education in graphics design and then moved through art and anthropology and then into museum studies when I was an undergraduate at Chico State. Um, after Chico, I went to John F. Kennedy University where I earned a dual degree, MA, MBA in museum studies and worked on exhibits. I worked at a bunch of small museums, including the San Francisco Museum and Historical Society when it was at the Mint, the Mendocino County Museum, uh, the Lane L. Smith Museum of Anthropology. And I did actually also work at Minetti Shrem in Davis, um, among other smaller institutions doing graphics design projects. So I didn't say this earlier, but I actually used to work here when I was a Sacramento State student about five years ago. And when I came back, oh my goodness, there has been so much development of programs and exhibits. And I know that you have been a huge part in bringing all of that. And so I'm really excited to share with everyone um, one of the projects that I know you are key in, in bringing to the public and show it through, through yeah. the Zoom here. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about this project? So as some of the things that you heard Ty talk about, you know, we are, the California State Railroad Museum, our motto is that our lives are made of railroad stories. And then we tell the stories of the railroad through the stories of people. And as part of that, you know, we're a laboratory of learning and we're a museum as community. And so it's really important for us to work with community partners while we're creating our exhibits um, to make them happen. And so for the 150th anniversary of the Transcontinental Railroad that happened on May 10th, 1869, and the anniversary was May 10th, 2019. Thank you, I'm sorry, it's been a busy year. Uh, we designed two permanent exhibits for the space 
and work with the Chinese community to um, help bring those stories out and amplify their voices in our space. So this is one of those exhibits that we worked on. This is our gold spike exhibit. And before it was just a big wall with the Thomas Hill painting on it here. And there was a smaller version of the photograph, the champagne photograph um, hung on the wall. And of course our lost spike, it's sleeping right now. <laughs> uh, but as a revamp of the space, we really wanted to tell a more complete picture, give a more complete picture and tell a more complete story about what actually happened on that day. Uh, the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad. And the way that we wanted to approach it is that we wanted to talk about this concept of history and memory. So what do we remember? How do we remember history? And then what uh, do we remember about that history? So this is a great space to talk about that, especially through the expression of art, because this painting here, Thomas Hill's painting, The Last Spike, was painted six years after the actual event occurred and wasn't completed until six years after that. So, and if you look at this painting too, um, we, the last quartz I did actually was about the painting. So you can take a look at that. Um, there are a lot of people in this painting who were not actually at the event, which is really interesting. So we have a conversation about that in this exhibit. We also talk about the photographers that were there on the day, what they were seeing with their cameras, and how they were seeing those and recording those events. And it was really important for us to make sure that we have a conversation in this particular exhibit about the role of the Chinese railroad worker, which was 90% of the transcontinental um, workforce on the Central Pacific side of the rail line. And it was really important for us to make sure that they had a presence in this particular exhibit talking about this day, um, because there wasn't a lot of um, visual record of them at this event although there's some written documentation. So one of the biggest things that I really love about this exhibit is, uh, well, there's a couple, but first of all is this really big monitor that we have, this screen. And the best part about this is, instead of just looking at one static image, you get to look at all of the different images from the, that were taken on the day of the um, ceremony. So you get to see in big picture, a lot of the detail that you wouldn't see if you were just looking at some of the smaller stuff. The other thing that's really important for our museum is access and inclusion. And one of the things that we did for this exhibit to create that um, aspect of the museum is to install and design and install this tactile art piece. So this art piece has nodes on it here, and I'm not gonna touch them because I'll start talking. <laughs> um, but Essentially, this is a raised image that the non-sighted community can come and see or feel the, the painting of the last spike. And these nodes here give you audio description. They also talk about the history. Um, and it's in English and Spanish, which is really great. So this is, um, was a really big investment for us. And I really think that it's in, paid off and also has increased our um, accessibility and inclusion here at the museum. Thank you, Kim. Yeah, I love this space. Yeah, I remember it was just the end of this really long hallway and this one painting, and now there's just so much to look at. Um, I'm, I was gonna plug your uh, everything you need to know about the last spike ports as well. Um, if you scroll back down through the ports home learning programs, you can find that. And there is a very interesting and a little bit scandalous story of this painting. So I highly recommend checking that out. And Kim, I know there is a lot going on in the education and interpretive world right now. Um, for me, Kim is one of my main people here <laughs> who is coordinating all of these behind the scenes programs. Can you give us a little sneak peek about what might be coming up this spring in education and interpretation? Yeah, our interpretation operations team, uh, which makes up more or less our interpretive department, has been working super hard around the clock, and I am so proud of all of the work that everyone has done, including you, Lauren. Thank you. Um, so we have a full suite of stuff coming in the spring. So spring 21, um, we will be doing digital classroom three days a week for Horses to Horsepower, which is one of our interpretive programs. We'll be um, releasing digital activities in our student activity center, as well as some more teachers resources um, that our interpretive operations team has put together and also uh, our intern 
team put together over this last semester. So that's really exciting. We'll be working with Chico State Visual Anthropology Department to put together our next digital program, which will be Westward Bound. And that will most likely debut in the summertime and in the fall. So we have a lot of uh, interpretive projects coming up because we live in this digital world now, right? For the next while. <laughs> yeah, while, there we go. <laughs> um, and in terms of exhibits, we're really working on redesigning our lobby. So we recently made our floors uh, grind and polish the concrete floors. Look at that shine. <laughs> So, Which funny note, we were trying to film an interpretive program in here while they were grinding and polishing. So we had a kind of a hectic schedule trying to work around that, but still get the footage in time. It's been an interesting year. But. Yeah, it's definitely been interesting, <laughs> yes. but fruitful. I think, yeah. I think otherwise we wouldn't have been able to dedicate so much time and energy and effort into really enhancing and improving and building upon really great interpretive programs that have been um, very successful and taking those and really like updating some of the content with more current um, and contemporary research. But also, you know, if we hadn't had this like last 12 months to really look at those things, I don't think we would have been able to do it quite as successfully as we have. So I'm really excited and happy about that. So not yeah. all bad. Yeah, Some silver linings here. Well, Kim, thank yeah. you so much. One more question for you. What do you like about your job? My job because <laughs> I get to work with some really talented, really amazing people, and I love team development. And it's been a great opportunity for me in my personal career to work with such a great group and to really hone my own skills in helping people create and become better interpreters and create some really great interpretive content. And so that is probably the most fulfilling part for me. Well, thank you so much, Kim. I really appreciate you joining us. We're going to keep on going as we pan over this amazing exhibit. You're about to go talk to one of my lead copywriters. <laughs> yes, we are. Enjoy. See. Thanks, Kim. And as we're going down around the hallway here, I want to give you a little bit of an insight. In um, this Ports Career Day kind of feels uh, either or have open in these jobs of doing this for a while and come in with a lot of education and experience. So Kim is our park interpreter too, but if you are interested in joining interpretation with California State Parks, there's a couple different ways to go about that. Um, firstly, I am a seasonal employee, so I'm a park interpretive specialist, and that is a a part-time job that you can start out with as you're going into interpretation. And then we have our interpreters one, two, and three in the state park system, which are all exam positions and take some additional um, experience and education. So that's a little inside look at interpretation. And let me flip you around because this is a really neat exhibit that I know you would rather see. There we go. So we are in our transcontinental gallery going along the Governor Stanford locomotive. And hello, just taking in the scene here. And I would like to introduce you all to Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Hi, everyone. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, your position here at the Railroad Museum? What does that job do? Okay. Well, um, I am a guide one. My name is Debbie. I'm guide one here at the museum. Now, when you hear the word guide, you might think of somebody that leads tours. And in fact, throughout most of state parks, that is what a guide one does. We do things a little bit differently here at the museum. And the people who lead the tours here are actually our wonderful docent volunteers. So they lead the tours. Um, and that isn't something that I actually take care of. So you're probably wondering, what is it that I actually do? Well, a guide is also an interpreter. And interpreters uh, study a topic, and then we boil that information down into information that's interesting and easy to understand. So I do that. And then what I do is I write the words. So I'm the person who writes the words that you see on the interpretive panels that we have here. 
in the museum. I'm standing here in the middle of an exhibit that I researched and wrote. It's about the Chinese railroad workers. And uh, what you see here is the result of several months of research, of reading books, articles, uh, tracking down primary source material. And uh, we actually worked with a Chinese advisory committee. And on the Chinese advisory committee for this exhibit were members of the Chinese community so that we could understand what it was that they were actually interested in uh, having in an exhibit like this. So that, those are some of the things that, that um, I do. I take all that information, as I said, and then I boil it down to 150 words. And I do that and I write that on an eighth grade level so that it will be interesting to everyone who comes into the museum who might want to read this and learn. My motivation is to get you to be inspired by what you read here. So maybe after you've left this exhibit, you'd say, gee, I'd like to know more about the uh, Chinese railroad workers. So maybe you'll go to the bookstore where we might see that we have several books on the topic, or you'll go to your local library, or you'll you know, buy something online, or maybe you'll want to watch a documentary that goes into um, more detail. So that's really what motivates me and what I do with all of this. Um, another thing that I do, I, I create school programs and I write teacher's manuals. So you can see that I do a lot of research and writing in my job. And she is also a wonderful public speaker and we love having her as the face of some of our interpretive programs as well. And Debbie, can you tell us a little bit about your path before becoming a guide one here? I know this is not the first state park that you have uh, worked at and you have filled more of a traditional guide position elsewhere. Um, yes, so I actually have been here at the Railroad Museum for about five years. I came here as a park interpretive specialist and you might've heard about that because several of us start out that way in a seasonal or a part-time position. So I worked as a park interpretive specialist here for a year before I had the opportunity to interview for the full-time position of, of being a guide. But before that, I did work, as Lauren said, I worked at the California State Capitol with state parks as uh, doing interpretive work. And I also worked at the Center for Sacramento History, which is the city archives, doing interpretive work. So um, I've, I've done a lot of interpretive work that brought me here. And Debbie, Kim told us a little bit about what we have upcoming this spring with interpretive programs, but do you have any goals or programs that you hope to work on, say, in the next year? It's been uh, kind of interesting since we've been closed, and we had a five-year plan to work on exhibits here in the museum, but since the museum's been closed, we had to kind of change path, which I'm sure is what Kim was talking about, working on our digital programming. So I continue to work on digital programming and what I'm working on now is a new program at the Central Pacific Passenger Station. And we're working on that. It's called Westward Bound, um, traveling on the, the Transcontinental Railroad. And I'm writing the teacher's packet for that. So that's currently what I'm working on. Thank you, Debbie. I'm excited to be a part of that as well. We are in crunch time to get our scripts memorized, to get ready um, for when Chico State arrives. Mm -hmm. And actually earlier, there was a, a couple of hands that went up when they said they were high school or college students. Do we have any Sacramento State or Chico State students tuning in today? Put the hand up if you are a Chico State or a Sac State student. I am too. Okay. Cool, yeah, a couple of you. Thanks for joining us. Oh, good. Uh, looks like we got five. Um, last thing, Debbie, and maybe we can walk over here so we can show a little bit of the other side of the exhibit. Um, what do you like about your job? Well, um, by the way, I just wanna say that I graduated from Sac State. I went back later in life. I went back in my forties to get my degree. So uh, shout out to Sac State. <laughs> I love my job because I get to immerse myself in history, which is my passion. So I actually get to escape. Should we keep walking? Do you want to sure. Yeah, we're headed into um, the roundhouse. So I perfect. feel like I have the best job in the museum because I actually get to escape to different times. When I wrote about the Chinese workers experience, 
I got to go back to the 1860s and experience what that was like. I did another exhibit that talked about um, a train that was stuck in the Sierra and a blizzard. And I got to be on that train stuck with 200 other passengers. It was really, really cold and scary. Um, so that's why I, I love my job because I get to immerse myself in all these stories. And that is what we're about here at the Railroad Museum is uh, we're all about railroad stories. So thank you, Debbie. And at the moment, actually, I believe you are our only guide one position. So, hey, in the future, if you're watching and you think I'd like to do that, stay tuned because I know the Railroad Museum will be in need of more guides in the next couple of years. Debbie needs yep. a, a support team here. <laughs> so thank you so much, Debbie. We're going to keep on going. All right. Bye. All right, making our way through to our last presenter. And if you've watched other ports programs, you may have noticed this is much smoother. We have upgraded our technology. We now have a gimbal. Uh, we got a nice little uh, present in the mail a couple days ago with all kinds of new technology fun. So as we continue making ports programs and digital school programs, our, our quality is going up here. So this is really fun to walk around with. Hi, Melanie. So our last speaker here, I would like to introduce you to Melanie. Hi, Melanie. Hi. <laughs> Could you please tell us uh, what you do here at the museum and what that position does? Absolutely. So my name is Melanie Turan, and I am the curator of this museum. As you've seen already, you've uh, walked around. There's lots of railroad equipment, cars, and locomotives. And my job here is to make sure that these are all well cared for, as well as they all have a place to live and to tell their stories. Nice. And Melanie, what brought you to the curator position? So I came here, um, you know, I didn't take the, the traditional route of getting a formal degree in museum studies. Instead, I went to get a master's in library science and um, information studies with an emphasis in archives. And that really taught me the value of good data. So, um, but throughout the last 15 years, I've worked in many museums, um, big and small and I've learned that the three museums, libraries, and, and archives really have, um, they're all really very similar in that they are all stewards of our collections, of our collective history and our culture. Thanks. Thanks, Melanie. And if you're tuning in, you have a little bit of a different uh, behind the scenes look at a museum. Um, these positions are not at every state parks because we have these cultural resources that we're sharing here. Uh, Melanie, would you share with us something that you have worked on or kind of explain what is some of the the day to day of taking care of the artifacts and exhibits here? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, well, what we do here at the California State Railroad Museum is we have an opportunity and a platform to really share these stories that are connected to these objects. These objects can speak for themselves. So um, we really are the advocates um, of their stories and every uh, object has a part that um, an experience that has has to do with the lives of the people who are connected to it, who were touched by it or influenced by it. So that's um, really our goal here. So part of um, my job is to preserve uh, these objects and everything you see around here um, so that in a way that we're preserving their stories and these lived experiences. Um, and that's what you know, it all becomes down to. So let's walk over to this locomotive right here and we can see um, an example of that. Great. And if you want to learn how this locomotive works, one of the earlier reports we did is how a steam engine works. And it actually features um, the Sonoma locomotive right here. If you just can't get enough of it in the next two minutes here. All right. So behind us, we have the cylinder here, which is um, what drives the locomotive. So you have the piston that's housed beside it. And what we've been working on are these cylinder caps right here. So if you kind of turn around to this side, you'll see clearly um, what we've been doing is taking off this oh, yeah. kind of sheen. So you see the difference yes. here. You have um, all these fingerprints, if you, you can kind of see down there. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, been, been much loved by the community. And um, so we're just kind of taking that back a little bit and bring back a bit of that shine to see what it would have looked like when it was in operation. Yeah. Oh, what was the process for, for doing that? And how long did it take you? Well, we're still in, in progress uh, and it's not a completed project yet. So it's just a matter of, of really just taking the cloth and polishing it down. Yeah. So Melanie, when you are done with 
this particular project. What are, what are you hoping to work on in the future? Do you have any upcoming goals or projects for exhibits? Well, you know, part of part of um, what a curator does is we serve the the memories of all the people who have touched all these objects and been a part of their lives. And what I do is just a small part of that history. And um, so creating a space for these objects to live in, to tell their stories, as well as to make sure that they have a path forward into the future. So uh, part of that is taking care of physically preserving these objects so that they have uh, they, they remain, as well as creating spaces where we can have engagement and community uh, discussions and dialogue about and sharing our own collections within them. So I'm hoping that one day we can have a place, uh, physical, virtual, whatever it is, where it's uh, we'll have this conversation um, where we can share our collections as well as invite everybody out there to talk about what you have in your in your lives, that um, so objects that tell stories about you. Thanks, Melanie. And last question for you: What do you like about your job? Well, one of the things. Um, I'm learning is that I've lear I'm learning something new every day uh, from the objects, from the people I work with, from people out outside. So it's really a continual process and um, that's what keeps the job exciting. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming to the museum today and telling us more about your work. We're gonna actually head on up for a little bit of a bird's eye view. Thank you, Melanie. All right, everybody. So heading up the steps to our cab forward which gives a really nice kind of aerial view of the roundhouse as we close out here. Things are still pretty quiet, but um, I'm hoping that we can do a career day part two coming up at the end of the month. As I said, the jobs that we saw today focus more on career and exam positions, but we have a whole lot more going on in state parks for seasonal and student employees. So next time, if you'd like to tune in, I'm hoping to feature um, park aides, park interpretive specialists, um, maintenance, and a ranger. I was hoping to get a ranger today, but they were doing a canine training. So hopefully we can have them join us next time. We also have a lot going on on our website, uh, californiarailroad.museum. You can check out more about some of the projects and exhibits that you've heard from our team today. So thank you so much. Keep tuning in to the Quartz Home Learning Program. And I'm really appreciative that all of you joined us today. Bye, everybody.